What's up, guys? Mace of the Brock Henderson here, and this is Falcon and the Winter Soldier, Episode 5, Truth. Or as I like to call it, the build-up episode. Because most good series have that one episode where everything just sort of builds up, and you can feel it building, and it's leading toward what you know is going to be a very climactic finale. And this did its job very well. And especially when you look at how everything played out, you look at the end of last episode and the beginning of this episode... It was nice to have an episode that sort of takes a little bit of a breather, builds up some character development, builds up some some drama before we get what is probably going to be a very action-packed finale for this season. Um, but first of all, let's talk about easily the best part of this episode, because he finally gets a chance to really shine, and that is John Walker. First of all, if anybody watching this happens to be one of those idiots who was giving him death threats, shame on you. <laughs> He's an actor, and he's playing this part brilliantly, because from the very beginning, it's just been interesting to see his character growth. You know, at first he was just kind of this smarmy, he's smiling for the cameras, he, he's very cocky, you can tell that he thinks highly of himself, but he seems like a decent enough guy. And he's just slowly gone down this rabbit hole that eventually led to his best friend being killed, and then now taking the serum, it's driving him... A little crazy. And again, I don't know if we're going to find out anything else about the serum and if it's going to be different than the serum that Steve Rogers took. Because um, it does seem a little bit like he seemed like a decent guy before and now he's just becoming crazier and crazier. And even, you know, Carly, she didn't seem like a bad person, but it seems like she's slowly getting crazier and crazier. So I'm going to be curious to find out if we find out that this serum is different. Like, it doesn't necessarily make you more of who you are, like what the original serum supposedly did, but it's actually something that can sort of pollute your mind and almost drive you a little insane. Because uh, that kind of feels what's going on with John Walker here. He's just... It's amazing acting from Wyatt Russell because you really feel like this guy is just... He really believes what he's saying. He really believes all the crazy stuff he's saying. Like, no, he's the one that killed... My best friend, he's the one that killed Lamar, and he wasn't. We all know he wasn't, and he knows he wasn't, but he still says it like he believes it. And then even when he's talking to them in the in the courtroom, he's talking to the senator. I mean, just the conviction with which with he delivers those lines, I mean, it just really grips you, and you really feel like he believes he's not in the wrong, and he believes that he is Captain America. The amount of times he says it is just... You can feel the conviction from him. And I almost feel like that's kind of the point. Like, he does feel this way. This is really what he believes. So is this the serum making him think this way? Is this the serum affecting his mind? Or is this the serum bringing out this sort of arrogance that he has and that he's always had deep down? Because, um, again, when we saw him earlier on in the season, he didn't seem this arrogant. He didn't seem like he was full of himself. You know, he was talking about how big of a mantle this was and how he felt like he wasn't worthy enough. So to see him be this cocky and this arrogant and be like, no, I am Captain America. Is that the serum talking? Or is this the part of him that we didn't know he had, that he was around other people, he was playing it up nice for them? Um, so it'll be really, really curious to see what's going to happen with him next. But a lot of this episode was just build up to what he is going through. You know, we see him talking to Lamar's family. We see him going through his other than honorable discharge, whatever that means. I've I've heard of a dishonorable discharge, and I've heard of an honorable discharge. I've not heard of an other than honorable discharge. I'll have to look that up later. Um, but then, of course, he meets this Fontaine lady, and apparently this was the, the big cameo, you know, person's first uh, appearance in an MCU film uh, as Julia Dreyfus as Fontaine. And um, don't know really much about her character. I had to look it up. Apparently, at some point, she became Madame Hydra in the comics. Um, I don't know if that's what they're going to do here, because we already did kind of have a Madame Hydra with uh, Ava in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. So maybe that's what she's going to be here. I don't really know. I don't know if she's connected to the power broker at all, or if she's just sort of here to be another villain <laughs> for the series. Um, but I, I liked her delivery. I liked how kind of almost goofy she was, <laughs> like, it felt very, I, I actually heard a comparison to Agatha Harkness, I can kind of see that, you know, she had that kind of same, I guess, nonchalant air about her, like, she didn't really care 
what they were going through. She was making jokes about it. Um, but I'll be interested to see what they do with her character next. But anyways, on to some of the other stuff that was really enjoyable in this episode. I really like the stuff with Sam and Bucky. You know, because it's stuff that we've seen throughout the season. It's stuff that's sort of been hinted at, built up, but not really talked about. And we finally had it laid out bare for us. You know, why Bucky hates what Sam did with the shield. Why Sam felt like he needed to give the shield up. It was interesting. And I like the conversation between the two of them. And honestly, I just like seeing them sort of hang out. You know, because we've only really seen them on missions. We've only ever seen them battling bad guys together. This is the first time that we really got a chance to see them just chilling out, talking to each other, really getting to know each other. And I feel like that's been lacking this season. You know, as much as I've liked the banter between them, as much as I've liked sort of what their chemistry is right now, this was kind of a nice breath of fresh air compared to what the rest of the season has been. Um, so I hope they can continue that a little bit next episode. Obviously, with how fast everything's probably going to be moving, I don't know if we'll have much time for a bit more camaraderie. Um, but that opening fight bet between them and John Walker was very well done and very intense as well. And I like seeing them kind of working together a little bit, and I hope they can build on those elements into the next episode. Um, obviously, the whole case thing, I don't know why they're building it up so much. Like, I don't know. If I'm wrong, then I'll look really silly, but as he, when he brought him the case, and as they're like showing it, but he's not opening it, and then they end the episode with him opening it, all I can think is, okay, it's a gift from the Wakandans, is he getting vibranium wings? Is that what they're, like, is that what it's supposed to be? Because if that's what it is, I knew that as soon as Bucky set the case down and said, this is from the Wakandans. So if that's all it is, if it's just, oh, these are vibranium wings, it's like, okay. I mean, that's what I figured. Why were we building this up so much? Why are we ending it like the case in Pulp Fiction, like opening it up and then cut to black? Like, is this going to be that big of a deal? Is it something else that's not the wings? Because that's all I could think of. It's like, okay, it's a new pair of wings. It's vibranium wings. They probably look really slick. But I don't know. Maybe it's something else entirely. Maybe it's like a hundred million dollars and he's going to take that and he's going to buy some fancy stuff. I don't know. Um, but anyways, so that's about all with Sam and Bucky. Um, some of the stuff that kind of on the fence about, first of all, the stuff between Sam and Isaiah, not Bad, but also, again, going back to what we saw earlier, you know, the whole idea, you know, the racism topic and all that, again, a little over the head, or I guess bashing over the head is what I mean to say. It's a little bit too much in your face. It's, it's like, I don't know, they want to talk about it and they want to try to be subtle, but they're not being subtle about it. And again, it's just one of those things where you feel like you could see both sides of it, but they only really show one side. You know, if it was a conversation topic of was Isaiah kept trapped all these years because he was a black man and because they didn't want a black man to be Captain America, or was it because they didn't want everybody to know what they did to all these people, how they experimented on them, and then experimented on him to find out why he didn't die because of the serum. I felt like that could have been an interesting topic of conversation, and with Sam, he does have a very hopeful, optimistic point of view so it would have been kind of interesting to have the dialogue between the two of them, but it really just felt like Isaiah sort of bashing Sam over the head with, no, your ideas are stupid. Like, America is racist, and it's always going to be racist. It's run by a bunch of old white guys. They're never going to accept a black Captain America. It just felt like it was so much bashing it over the head that I just, I kind of tuned out the scene. <laughs> and I felt like it could have been a very interesting dialogue between the two of them, because they do have differing points of view. So I just feel like there's sometimes, and it's not just this show, I mean, every show does it, where they think they have an interesting dialogue, but instead it's just bashing people over the head with their points of view, and it just comes off as so preachy. It just gets a little frustrating that they can't just, hey, here's this point of view, let's talk about it, let's discuss it. So that was a little much, but I still, I feel like the acting in the scene really did get me, like I felt like everything Isaiah said, said, I was hanging on his words because his acting was phenomenal. And then, of course, Anthony Mackie was killing it, too. Um, so the acting was great, but yeah, the scene was a little much. Um, and then everything going on with Carly and her friends right now, it kind of feels like, I don't know, they're almost sort of being 
kind of pushed to the side almost because now it feels like the power broker is really the big bad villain. The GRC are sort of playing their hand a little bit, but Carly and her friends now just seem almost like pawns in, in a bigger scheme. Um, I, I don't really know what they plan to do with them now. I don't really know what they expect us to feel about them because again, Carly is sort of going down a darker path. So any sort of relatability she's having, anything that we're supposed to care for her about, is kind of going out the window because now she's just willing to work with this terrorist because she's just going crazy now. <laughs> and it just kind of detriments her character a little bit. It feels like it takes away from a lot of what all of the Flag sm Smashers were supposed to feel like, which is people with a cause that are just fighting for their lives, basically. But now all of a sudden they're turning into terrorists. And it just, it feels less interesting to me. Um, so hopefully there is some point to their story. Don't really know how Sharon Carter's playing into it, you know, because we see her talking to this this terrorist guy that gives Carly and her group the, the weapons. I don't know if that means she's trying to help them and fight back against the power broker, or if she, there's a lot of people saying she is the power broker. If so, then maybe she's trying to paint them as terrorists to get everybody to turn against them. Um, that could be her ploy. I don't really know. There's still a lot of questions that need answering, and kind of similar to how I felt at the end of WandaVision, it feels like there's a lot of questions how are they going to answer them all in one episode? And unfortunately, as we found out in WandaVision, some of the questions are going to be saved for a later film or a later TV series. So hopefully there aren't going to be too many questions that we're left hanging on, and hopefully there are not going to be too many boner jokes. We'll see what happens. But yeah, overall, I'm excited. I'm looking forward to seeing what this final episode is going to bring, and I'm, again, I'm sure the action is going to be good because so far the fight scenes have been set up very well. And it, it, again, it has that very similar feel to a spy thriller where the action scenes are close quarters. They're very gritty and realistic, um, tying back to what we saw a lot of in Winter Soldier. So, yeah, I'm excited to see what, how they're going to wrap it up, but that's it for me. So let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. What were your thoughts on this episode? Let me know what we can talk about and discuss, all that good stuff. Leave a like and subscribe, future Falcon and the Winter Soldier reviews, and I'll see you guys in the final episode. Peace out.